Hi everyone! In this video, we will explore the rendering settings you can apply when using the Corona Renderer. First off, let's start by explaining what the rendering settings are. They are mainly algorithms that calculate effects not displayed in the editing environment due to their complexity. To make myself clear, this is the editing environment of 3ds Max. We see a floor plan, the elevations of our project and the perspective camera viewport. And based on this perspective, here is the render we will get. So our render has lighting, shadows and all the materials are displayed with their attributes, with reflections, bump effects and so on. So to go from this to that, we need to hit the render button. Before we press the render button, we need to adjust the rendering settings. To do so, either press F10 or click the Render Setup button. Although 3ds Max and Corona have several rollouts with commands, you should not feel overwhelmed by all these settings. Corona is really easy to set up and from all the settings you see here, I will explain only those that I believe are vital to control the quality of your images and the rendering time. To use Corona, we must first select it as our renderer. At the top of the Render Setup window, make sure Production Rendering Mode is selected as the target and then choose Corona Renderer. If you only use Corona as a rendering engine in all your projects, then you can set it as your default renderer to avoid repeating this step every time you start a new project. To do so, scroll down and open the Assign Renderer rollout. Make sure that next to Production, Corona is selected and click on Save as Defaults. Next, go to the Scene tab and to the General Settings rollout. Let's start with the Progressive Rendering Limits. Personally, I use these two options, the Time Limit and the Noise Level Limit. As its name denotes, in the Time Limit fields, we set the rendering time. So, if I set 1 hour, the render will be calculated for 1 hour and then it will stop no matter the noise level at that point. While in the Noise Level Limit field, we set the desired noise level. A good range of values to set here so that your render is clean is between 2 to 4. The lower you set it, the cleaner the image you will get, but at the same time, the longer it needs to be calculated. Personally, I set the noise level to 3.5%. Now, the software will render the scene until one of these reaches its limit first. So, if for instance, I set here 2 minutes and the noise level of 4% and press render, The scene will render for 2 minutes and then it will stop although the noise level limit is not 4% but much higher. To see what the noise level of our render is, go to the Stats tab in the Frame Buffer window. In the Performance section, you see that the target is 4% and next to it is the current noise level. And we can see that for the 2 minutes rendering time that we set, the noise level is approximately 28%. And the render stopped after 2 minutes, although it didn't reach the goal of 4%. Personally, when I do my test renders, I set the time limit to 15 minutes. And I'm not interested in the noise level. This way, the scene will render for 15 minutes and then it will stop rendering no matter the noise level at that point. Once I have finalized my scene and I am ready to render the final image, I will set the time limit to zero and I will go to the noise level limit and set it to 3.5%. The next setting I adjust is the denoising mode. As its name denotes, denoising is a process added at the end of the rendering process and it smartly blurs the image to reduce the noise present. 
The default option is none and you can see that my render has too much noise. While if I select Corona High Quality and re-render, I get this render. It still has a lot of noise, but it is reduced thanks to the denoising. As I said before, the more you increase the rendering time, the better the result you will get. To be sure that your render will have no noise, then instead of setting a rendering time, you need to set the noise level limit below 4%. A really cool feature I always use is the light mix. Click the button Set up light mix in the general settings rollout. Personally, I keep the default settings here, which is the option Instant Slides and click the Generate button. Now, if we render and go to the light mix tab in the frame buffer window, you will see a list of all the lights we have in the scene. Although behind the mirror I have two LED lights, in the light mix list we only see one, since these two lights are instances and if you recall, when we clicked the generate button, we selected the instance light options, which means that the lights that are instances will appear here as one. So, from the light mix list, apart from turning off and on lights, we can also change their intensity through the numeric field. Or we can change their color if we click on the color swatch. If we drag and drop, we quickly copy the same color to another light. So Light Mix allows us to play with the lights of the scene and create different lighting scenarios while the image is rendering or after it has been calculated. Going back to the Render Setup window, if we click on the Show VFB button, the frame buffer will open and we can see our latest render. If we click on the Start Interactive button, we start the interactive rendering. The interactive rendering allows us to work on the scene while the viewport is being rendered. If, for instance, I select the pendant, right-click and choose Hide Selection, the viewport will automatically re-render with the pendant hidden this time. If the option Render Hidden Lights is enabled, then any lights that are hidden will render. So you can see here that although I have hidden the pendant, the light sources are visible in the render and they cast light. I will click the Stop button to stop the interactive rendering. One more option I use pretty often is the Material Override. Enable this checkbox, click on None and select the Corona Physical Material. If we now render, all the materials of the scene are overwritten to the default Corona Grey color. If I want to change this color, I will open the Material Editor, drag this in here, and select Instance so that any changes that I will do in the material in the material editor will automatically apply in the material in the render setup window as well. I will go to its settings and make it a lighter grey. So this is what we call the clay render. Going back to the Render Setup window, these are basically the settings we need to adjust to produce our render. So, set the time limit or the noise level limit, add the Corona High Quality Denoising method and add the Light Mix. Then, you are ready to render either using the Material Override option to produce a clay render or disable this to produce the typical render. Moreover, you can use either the interactive rendering by pressing this button 
or the production rendering by pressing the render button. Regarding the frame buffer window, we already saw the stats and the light mix tabs. Let's also see the post tab, which is really important and I always use it to adjust my render. Exposure allows us to adjust the brightness of our image. So for this specific render, instead of 0, I will set it to 2.5 to make it brighter. Highlight Compress controls the highlights of the image, which are, let's say, the bright areas. You can see that this part here is overexposed. If we increase this value and instead of 1 we set the Highlight Compress to 8, you can now see how nice and subtle the lighting looks. The white balance controls the temperature of the image. Now, because all the lights of the scene are too warm of 3500 Kelvin, the image looks a bit orange, let's say. So, I will make the white balance 6000 to desaturate my image a bit. Another setting I adjust are the curves. I will enable them and click on the editor. The curves allow us to control the contrast of our image. Moreover, we can control the contrast from the contrast setting. Finally, I will enable the bloom and glare effect to add some glow to our lights. That's all for now on the Corona rendering settings. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in my next video.